Hello. I'm here to talk about my friend Jude. My friend Jude inspired me. She was a daughter, a sister, a friend, a crazy-haired artist, a people magnet. She lived big and she lived well, but it's the way that she died that inspired me. I saw Jude for the last time only hours before she died three months ago. She insisted I come that Sunday before I pop my clocks, she said. And we spent the afternoon together and she did her now slightly slower version of chain smoking and we reminisced about her life, her life as an artist, and her life living with cancer. In many ways, it was an ordinary afternoon. So I had no idea that Jude had told her family that this very day was the day she was going to die. But this is not a morbid story. Jude grabbed hold of the experience of dying in the same way she grabbed hold of her living. And one of the ways that she did that is going to her beloved Bondi Beach every morning for a walk. And she did that until days before she died. And as it turned out, Jude didn't die that Sunday. She died the next day, Monday morning, at home, where she'd planned, surrounded by her dearest friends and her brother Paul. I think, mostly, we've become out of practice with everyday dying, out of practice with the doing and the talking of death. And while the way Jude died isn't what everyone will or should do, it is an example of how to live well and how to die in a way that reflects this. Until her last breath, Jude actively surrounded herself with the everyday business of family, friends, food, art, and love. And even here, in, at her funeral ceremony, in a Surrey Hills art gallery, we painted and filled her coffin while the latest exhibition hung around us. Why does this inspire me? Well, Jude didn't subscribe to the we are a death-denying society line, and neither do I. 